بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله اللهم نسأل لما جلت سهلة وانت اذا شئت تجعل حزنة سهلة uh, Today ان شاء الله we will talk about the design process Okay so uh, at the beginning when we look at the title the design process So, so when we see the word process that means it's, uh, it's not a one event or one step or one uh, uh, one topic so it's uh, a series of events or a series of stages or a series of steps that we had to follow in order to do the design okay so uh, when we look at this one we will look all to all the process needed to in order to get a, a good design so at the beginning uh, remember that uh, the design process the designer is usually faced with very poor, uh, poorly defined problem <coughs> that's why we have to uh, do some research in order to understand and decide and identify the problem okay so uh, the, uh, at the beginning you will start with the proposal from your supervisor this proposal only will give you uh, a hint about the topic you are going to do uh, a design or you are going to study so this is very poorly defined problem uh, and the first thing you have to do is to formulate and Id identify the real problem and this stage is very important because if you define it properly then you will get to the all the steps uh, will be uh, the follow the following steps will be uh, will be correct and uh, maybe we'll get the right uh, decision in order to do the, the design but if you do if, if you do if you cannot define the the problem you are facing or the issue you are facing then all the following process will be uh, messy and uh, all the following uh, process will be uh, uh, it has it will be um <coughs> recalculated and uh, you will redo it again and again and maybe you will waste the time so the s the time you spend in defining the problem is very crucial at the beginning okay the uh, the, the design and difficulty are therefore two folds understanding the problem and finding a solution so we have two parts the first one is defining the problem and you uh, i cannot emphasize that you have to spend a lot of time defining the problem and you have to define the problem you have to define the problem before start finding the solution okay and uh, this two parts is uh, that it's we, ca we, we can uh, the designer has to uh, do okay and uh, at the beginning he will start with uh, not or poorly defined problem he has to do the definition he has to define uh, define and decide the criteria and uh, uh, and the issues he has to solve and then you will start the solution so you cannot start the solution before you know exactly what is the problem or you define the problem or you focus your problem to uh, certain criteria okay the designer should set the goals understand the constraints and set criteria by which solution may be recognized precise problem statement gives no indication of what a solution must be okay so so there is no final solution there is no final or uh, one solution can be it can be there is, uh, it can be a, uh, there can be many options okay and uh, there is uh, there is no final solution especially in the design process we will we'll see it as a, a cycle okay we we'll see it as a cycle once you finish you find the product then you can uh, get some feedback and then you do the process again and again and again so there is no final solution for example if you see the cars uh, if, you, if you see the cars uh, from 90s for example from 1990s now it's completely different and it's completely different because it's it's get through a process which is has gets uh, which get some uh, feedback from the customers and then they do uh, recalculation they do some uh, modification they do some uh, corrections they modify it they improve it okay and 
the improvement still is going so we cannot find uh, we, we cannot say this is the final and the only solution okay so the solution uh, uh, can be modified can be improved and uh, sometimes we can find different solution for the same problem okay but according to the criteria we put uh, and the function of the machine or maybe the availability of the uh, part then we have to decide and select one solution but that, that doesn't mean this is the only solution okay and this is the beauty of uh, uh, design so what's the design design anything that was made by conscious human effort process that is used to systematically solve problems so we will have some system we, f we will follow the steps and then in order to find the, uh, the product or the solution it's a creative iterative so it's creative it has to be something new or maybe modified something okay iterative that mean there is some sort of iteration so the first try second try third try it can be uh, repeated again and again and often open uh, open-ended process of conceiving and developing components system and process design requires the integration of engineering basics so uh, what do we need in order to be a good designer okay so uh, uh, you need some uh, some sort of uh, uh, ethics some sort of uh, knowledge okay so uh, design requires the integration of engineering okay basic and mathematical sciences okay a designer works under uh, constraints taking into account e uh, economic uh, health and safety social and environmental factors codes of practice and applicable laws okay so uh, you cannot design something if you, if you don't know what is the environment what is the effect of this design or your final uh, solution to the surrounding okay so you have to take it into consideration the surrounding which can be the economic uh, it can be the health and safety it can be the codes and the standards followed it can be the environment it can be uh, the laws so if if your solution affect any of this you have to take into account these uh, yeah, these uh, factors in uh, for your design <coughs> so what's the design process a design process is a systematic problem solving strategy with criteria and constraint used to develop many possible solutions to solve or satisfy human needs or wants and narrow down a possible solution to one final choice and this is very important uh, statement it say final choice not the only solution okay it's not the only solution we cannot say there is only one solution for a problem okay there is a uh, there could be many many solutions okay but we have to select one of them according to the constraint according to the criteria we put according to the uh, to the factors we have okay so we have to narrow that one down into a, a one final choice but not only the only solution okay so uh, it's a process it has to be uh, there's there, sh uh, there should be a, a systematic process starting from one step to another step to another step followed by another step okay until you reach up to the final solution but uh, this solution we cannot say this is the final solution we can say this is the final choice of a possible solutions okay complete design has to provide description of a final product and this is a uh, this is a different between uh, uh, between engineering and uh, the others okay so the engineer has to uh, give a detailed okay description of the solution it has to understand uh, it has to be understandable to those who will make the product so if you have uh, a third party or if you have a manufacturer so you you, you have to generate something uh, readable something um, can be understandable okay so you have to follow some standards you have to follow some uh, some codes in order to uh, in order to complete your uh, solution or your uh, design so 
uh, widely used uh, sort of uh, communication is a drawing okay that's why we have uh, at, the at the start of the engineer uh, engineering study we start the drawing okay the drawing course okay so usually we do a drawing and this is the sort of communication between the engineer and between the technician and between the technician and the engineer doing uh, the drawing okay and uh, yeah one image can uh, can say more than thousand words okay so we use drawing a lot okay and the engineering design process is a iterative process so it, um, it's repeat it can be repeated it can be corrected it can be try and error try and error until you get it okay and it it, uh, it can be iterative so it's a iterative process meet some human needs require decision making required application of scientific and technical information it it, uh, its main objective is to produce a system, a device, or a process. Okay, it can be the that can be a system, can be a device, can be a process. That is in some way is better than what has previously been produced, and or that has some unique quality. Okay. So it doesn't have to be a, a new unique solution it can be improvement or enhancement of uh, existing solution okay and this improvement has to be based on a scientific and technical uh, information we have okay so uh, we always hear uh, innovation and invention so what's the difference between uh, the innovation and the invention uh, the first product the first uh, creation we call it a invention okay and the process of developing this uh, invention we call it a uh, innovations and sometimes they call it uh, so for, for example if, if you look at the bicycle here we start with the first one which is here we call it this is the invention okay this is the first bike with two wheels and then we did do some uh, some sort of innovation which uh, creativity by uh, improving and changing some of the components of the original design okay in order to improve the performance uh, improve the quality or improve the uh, uh, the consumption okay so anything can be uh, improved so we call this one innovation and sometimes invention can be uh, can be said uh, this is the uh, idea okay in the lab and making this idea or making this invention or uh, transferring this invention into the market into the product into the mass product and all these things and make it um, commercial we call this one innovation this is another uh, uh, difference which can be uh, claimed as well okay so detailed design what what do we mean engineering usually you, you uh, uh, engineering uh, usually use the detailed design okay so we have the concept here from the customer with more abstract and the engineer will transfer this one to less abstract with more uh, with more details okay so this one will give us uh, more detailed solution and a clear vision of the final uh, product so the engineering design process is generally iterative not a linear so you cannot say there is one direction of a of the process okay you can reach up to for example step three and then you go back to step one or maybe go back to step two okay and sometimes you have to go back to the beginning okay so we will start with the problem definition which include the analysis understanding of the problem we have okay and then we will generate the conceptual designs synthesis okay and uh, generating the ideas the brainstorming and we we'll reach up to preliminary design okay uh, with some sort of evaluation okay and then we will have we'll reach up to design decision with uh, de uh, decision okay and this is we will decide uh, the the best solution according to the criteria we have which will meet uh, uh, our problem okay will meet or solve the problem 
and then we will come up to uh, we will come to uh, a detailed design okay so this is will will generate some sort of drawings okay and we'll take some actions okay in order to find the detailed drawing and then we will have some sort of production integration and test and in this uh, in this stage we will do some sort of uh, prototyping test it and make sure that the product will uh, will solve the problem without any issue okay without any issue in all these steps there is one thing which is very very important okay and has to be followed which is the documentation okay the documentation okay whenever you d uh, do any of these steps you have to document all these steps okay you have to document all these steps and we can do this one in uh, writing a report at the end of the at the end of the capstone project okay so you you have to do some sort of documentation detailed design process steps okay so we'll start with this uh, cycle we call this one a design cycle okay let's start from the beginning which is define the problem you you should uh, define the uh, problem okay spend a lot of time okay defining the problem spend 90 90 percent of uh, not 90 percent of the time but 50 uh, percent of the time in uh, defining the problem because if you cannot define a problem properly then all the following step will be uh, will be wrong all the following step you maybe in the future you have to do do it again redo it again and why because you didn't define the problem properly okay so spend the time understanding the problem uh, uh, understand what what is the uh, need w what are the need the needs okay and uh, fully understand the problem then you can set some constraints and criteria okay and then you will do some sort of brainstorming to generate ideas and solutions and this brainstorming you 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 are not limited to one solution okay you just sit with your friends okay and start generating uh, ideas okay start generating ideas so these ideas are the solutions which can be uh, even if it's a cra uh, crazy idea or unacceptable solution write it down okay write it down don't judge don't uh, don't stop anybody okay just do the brainstorming which is a uh, write any uh, anything and even the crazy uh, ideas then you will generate uh, ideas from this idea you will exclude some of some of them okay some of the ideas you will exclude them and some of the ideas you will combine them together and then you will come up with three to five uh, ideas okay this is a generating ideas uh, once you generate the ideas you will select one ideas okay you will select one idea which can be a uh, the conceptual uh, design okay the conceptual design in this conceptual design or this in this idea there there should be some sort of uh, parts okay okay or process okay and for each part okay they can can be a uh, alternative uh, solution or alternative uh, ideas or uh, alternative parts okay so alter alternative solution okay once you select for each part al the alternative okay and select the best uh, uh, the best uh, part then you will uh, select the final solution you will reach up to the final solution and you will do the calculations okay you will do the calculation then you will make a prototype okay once you uh, find the or select the final solution you will generate what the drawing the detail the drawing okay then you will make a prototype before you uh, before you produce the final product okay so once you did the um, you made the you make the prototype and you test it and you find it okay then you will uh, refine the design okay how can you refine the design or can you start the production okay once you start the production you will get some feedback from the customers okay we've got some sort uh, some feedback from the customer sometimes once you did the whole process okay the 
calculation is done okay but the problem when you do when you combine them together you will find the problem so this is a refining the design and you can go back to the step one which is a finding the issue with your uh, design and continue with this cycle so you continue with this cycle okay before refining the, uh, the design sometimes you have to uh, to communicate with the uh, with the customers you can also communicate with the customers okay So define. Uh, so let's start with the problem definition, which is uh, define the problem. Okay, if we look at uh, define the problem. So there is a set of characteristic, and uh, one of the main character characteristics is formulation of uh, a problem are solution dependent. Okay, proposing a solution is a means of understanding the problem. So we have to understand at the beginning. We have to understand the problem. Otherwise, we cannot propose any solution or possible solution for for our problem. So understanding the problem and full understanding of the problem, defining the needs, uh, the wants, the concern, all this stuff it has to be defined properly in order to get the proposal or the proposed solution. Okay, and we have to know that there is no definitive solution to the problem there is no one solution there is no one and only one solution there can be there it can be a possible solution and we have to decide and go for one of the solution based on the concern and based on the criteria we put okay and uh, the availability the availability and all these uh, requirements and criteria we will select or we decide to go for one solution but that doesn't mean this is the only solution for this problem okay and if we look here uh, the engineer we are uh, we are uh, we as engineer the engineer must translate qualitative needs okay or wants okay of a customer into quantitative and measurable design requirements and goals so we have requirements and goals and ha these uh, those two things has to be quantitative and measurable okay so we, we can measure these things and we can say whether we reach up to this requirements or not and there is a difference between the requirements and the goals okay so what's the difference between the two okay design requirement must be met for the design to be considered a possible uh, solution so it has to be yes or no okay design goals is a feature desirable in the design the closer the design is to achieve the goals the better the design better or worse okay so uh, in a requirement it has to be yes or no for goals it has to be better or worse okay so this is the difference between the two So now we we are looking at the identifying criteria and constraint. Okay. So what's the difference between the constraints and criteria? Constraints set specific usually target or limit. So quantitative usually it's quantitative and specific uh, target or limit. Why? Uh, uh, but criteria is some sort of uh, there is some sort of flexibility here. Okay. So it can be used to judge between a different design proposal okay so let's take an example for example uh, if we have if we if we want to build uh, a building okay we want to uh, build uh, a tower or something like that so you can say that uh, the height should not exceed 30 meters so this is a const uh, constraints okay you set a specific quantitative uh, limit okay so the height of the building has n has not to exceed 30 meters, for example. Okay. As a criteria, for example, I can say that uh, yeah, this building has not to be more than a uh, 10 floors. Okay. So 10 floors. So this is the maximum number of uh, of floors. Okay. So you would have one, two, three, up to 10. But the height can be. 30 meter 32 33 maybe 30 
five okay so this is a there is some sort of a flexibility here so the criteria is only used for judging uh, between different uh, design options while constraints specific uh, quantitative limits or targets there is a function and uh, a non-function uh, requirement functional that's it uh, uh, related to the operation of the of the machine for example for example uh, sup uh, support a giving load uh, reach a giving distance size okay uh, move at a giving speed so all these related to the function of the uh, of the design okay why non-functional requirement usually a form focus like what size the weight the reliability durability power consu consumption so all this is a non-functional requirement okay and there is a difference between the two example of a design uh, example for example uh, for criteria and uh, uh, for requirements and goals for example uh, designing a, a bicycle okay for example uh, design requirements is the strength the bike has to sustain a specific weight of the rider okay for example the maximum weight has to be 120 kilogram for example so this is a, a requirement the strength of the bike has to withstand the, the weight of the rider okay design goals for example the weight of the uh, the total weight of the bike okay for example we c you can design uh, a bicycle made of steel and the weight will reach up to 20 kilogram okay at the same time if you use for example aluminium okay you can reach up to 15 kilogram you can use the carbon fiber and reduce the weight up to 10 kilograms so this is a, a goal which is the reducing the the weight the total weight of the bicycle so we can set a goal and we can set a, a requirement about the customer there is a two type of customer external customer or global uh, globe customer and internally or a team customers okay so for example the external the uh, external customer will be the retailer or the, uh, the supplier okay the buyer the end uh, the buyer the end the end user the government the society the maintenance the kit some things okay and then it will be uh, the team inside the team uh, the marketing the manufacturing the design and the shipping the management okay the legal we call this a uh, internal uh, customers so now uh, we are uh, we will look at the third step or the third stage of design process which is the conceptual design so at this stage we will we, you try to generate ideas okay, uh, as much as you can and to do this there is something called we, we call it brainstorming okay so in this brainstorming you will generate ideas and all the possible solution without any judging without any they just generate the ideas okay and there is some criteria you can follow okay in order to or some rules you know, in order to do the brainstorming okay so this is the most important uh, phase actually I, uh, I define the problem also that's important okay and also generating and do the research okay you have to do the background research and see w what are the available solutions you, you should have an idea what are the solution available in the market for example and uh, uh, what is the advantages and disadvantages well what are the gaps okay so you will target these gaps okay so at the beginning you, you should before you do the brainstorming before before you generate the ideas you, you should know how uh, how other uh, tackle the issues okay the same issue it, uh, especially if there is a previous uh, solution or uh, product so 
so you, you you should have you should know all the advantages and disadvantages and the gaps for all the available solution and and products okay after you do the background uh, research okay you will uh, go for the creative method of brainstorming okay so uh, yeah so there is some rules in order to uh, generate the solutions okay at the beginning before you decide which solution you have to go for okay you should have some sort of uh, or, or uh, a bank of uh, of solution and ideas okay so the rules of brainstorming no criticism allowed during the session okay large quantity of ideas wanted crazy ideas are welcome keep ideas short and snappy combine and approve on other ideas okay and others ideas okay so uh, it just generating the ideas don't stop don't judge just generate even the crazy ideas okay after that after that you can have some sort of uh, the, uh, the conceptual uh, if you, if you look, yeah after uh, after you did the brainstorming you can you can combine the ideas you can uh, uh, delete some of the ideas okay you can uh, maybe uh, accept some of the ideas okay and then you will have uh, a conceptual design you will have uh, you will reduce all these ideas into maybe three four or five ideas okay from from these three four or five ideas you you should have uh, the advantages and disadvantages of each idea okay and you may have some sort of criteria in order to judge these ideas and compare them together and then you will select one idea this is you will you will, it will be your conception or conceptual eh, design okay so uh, yeah this is some uh, words you can use in order to uh, to generate the ideas and help you generate the ideas okay and then we'll come to uh, alternative solution once you reach up to the cons uh, you have w one or one selected uh, design the this design or this idea okay has some alternatives or has some part okay for example if you want to design a, a lathe machine okay a lathe machine or a machine to cut uh, uh, or a saw machine okay maybe you'll have a circular cutter maybe you'll have a hacksaw okay so all these is uh, different eh? ideas then you you select one idea in this idea you will have some sort or uh, some component okay so many components maybe three four five or maybe ten components for each component there is a alternative okay for each component there is a an alternative and for each of these alternative in that component you will have some sort of advantages and disadvantages okay from these advantages and disadvantages you can select one alternative okay you can select one alternative for this uh, for this part or you can select one method or one part out of a uh, alternative uh, uh, alternative part can be uh, so if you look at the funnel okay oh this is the the funnel okay so this is generating the idea where the brainstorming coming okay so the concept re uh, refinement you will have some concept in and then you will do more refinement in order to finalize and finally the final uh, product okay the final product in this product you will have some sort of uh, alternative for each part and then for uh, for each alternative there you, you should select based on a uh, the advantage disadvantage and the criteria but okay so there is a uh, and then a design selection okay uh, which is the design uh, uh, this decision for each part for example uh, you should have you should do some sort of uh, analysis uh, uh, make select the material for example uh, and 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 be ready for uh, for uh, uh, 
be ready for the detailed drawing okay or detailed design okay so uh, this uh, decision mat matrix can be uh, sometimes can be used okay for example design one design two design three design four design five we have some uh, criteria for example the cost the safety the performance the ability okay and then we can uh, put uh, some weighting factor for example for the cost it, it will be 0.35 okay for the safety for example is 0 0.3 0 0.15 for performance and the reliability is 0 0.2 this weighting factor it depend about what uh, depend about the customer needs okay the customer needs for example the customer needs here need most of uh, uh, or focusing on uh, the cost okay so that's why we are giving it here more weight okay if you see here the total would be a one okay you can say this is the 35 30 15 20 this is one and then you will judge yeah, design one and design two design three okay you will give it a score for example for this design one is score three this is for design two four this is for design three for example the cost is very high so it will score a very low eh, score design four is very cheap so it's getting a score eh, nine but once you have a cheap product then maybe the safety will be eh, affected okay here it will be expensive but the safety will be eh, high and then you will multiply this uh, score by the weighting factor in order to get eh, this red eh, uh, score then you will add all these scores together in order to get to uh, the rank okay and you will look at this ranks and you will uh, select the highest rank the highest rank for example for this example here we will choose a uh, design for which is score or which rank a uh, 5.8 okay so this is 0 0.9 it's coming from 6 multiply by 0 0.15 it will equal to 0 0.9 for example this one 2.7 is 9 multiply by the weighting factor which is 0 0.3 and it will equal 2.9 seven and then you will add them to all together for example 0 0.35 plus 2.7 plus 0 0.6 plus 1 equal 4.7 so the rank is uh, the total uh, score here the total score so this decision matrix matrix will help you uh, uh, choose the best uh, the best design solution okay uh, Detail design after you, f you have to do the calculation, you have to do the uh, uh, the drawing, you, uh, you you will generate the model and make a prototype in order to test the design and test it before you uh, go to the next uh, step which is uh, the production, okay? So you have to test it, okay? The best way is to do a prototype or produce it or uh, uh, create a, a model and then test it, okay? Once you test it, once you f make sure that uh, the model is uh, working okay, then you can go for the next, which is next step, which is the, uh, which is detailed design. Okay, detailed design, which is the refine or refine the, the model. So you will have the detailed design with the drawing and all this thing, and then you can start uh, generating the uh, product maybe you will need a uh, refining the model uh, redesign it modify it okay so this is will go for uh, improving uh, the design and uh, there is a design methodology rational methods okay and uh, a lot of uh, concepts here okay and uh, functional analysis method so we have a functional analysis method uh, setting requirement okay uh, qfd okay uh, we have something called the quality function deployment okay qfd uh, qfd is explained in details in a separate uh, lecture so all these uh, methods can be uh, explained in in uh, in separated uh, lectures okay so uh, but we we are going to look at uh, briefly in uh, qfd or quality function deployment 
So now we will talk just briefly about uh, quality function def deployment or QFD. So, um, so for any product, there is some uh, there is some at attributes, okay? And this attributes it's usually uh, focus is the focus for the marketing team, okay? Or the the desire for the marketing team okay so they focus on the uh, product uh, attributes okay while engineer focus on engineering characteristics okay and attributes as a requirement and characteristic there is a relation between the between the two designers should define and understand the relation between the attributes or the requirements and their effect on a characteristic okay so QFD method sets targets to be achieved for engineering characteristic okay so of a product such that they satisfy customer requirements or attributes okay so using the QFD or Q quality function de deployment will help the designer in, or in order to set the targets or the focus or which exactly which um, the need characteristics they have to focus or to has to improve in order to um, make their product uh, better or more uh, acceptable than a comp uh, competitive uh, product okay so there is uh, some steps we will not talk about uh, in detail so at the beginning you have to identify the customer requirement or the product attributes okay determine the relative importance of the attributes okay uh, not all attributes are equally important there is a percentage weight you have to put some weight for each uh, attributes okay and then you have to evaluate the attributes of the competing uh, products see the, how the competitor doing with this attributes uh, draw a matrix of product attributes against engineering characteristics so at the top of the uh, at the top of the matrix uh, you will have the uh, at the top row you will have the engineering characteristic okay um, must be, uh, the engineering characteristics must be real measurable and uh, controllable okay uh, and then you should have a relation between the generic characteristic and the uh, product attributes okay and give them a score the strength of the relation can be indicated either by symbols or numbers okay so uh, if you use the number some advantage but can introduce a uh, some uh, experience uh, accuracy okay so large scores high highlight large uh, influence and then you can uh, define also the uh, house of quality okay the top row had which is show which show the relation between a or the interaction between all the engineering characteristics so the one which score the highest okay it might be related to another engineering characteristic so you 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 will, you will focus maybe in one engineering characteristic but it's related to another one so you have to focus for you have to focus on both unique characteristics so this is a uh, so this is a house of quality okay the top one which is so show at, the, uh, at this uh, for example at this one uh, here we can see the uh, the engineering characteristics and then at this side here if we complete this one we will uh, see the uh, attributes or the target of the customer targets and there is a weight here and then you score each of these target for each engineering characteristic and at this side you will have the competitors okay competitors and you see uh, how the competitors achieve the, uh, the attributes okay so at the end you will find for example this uh, this engineering characteristic for example the time to reset a room key or to receive a room key okay is the most important eh? engineering characteristic and this one is has got a, a strong relation with for example eh, uh, the distance or the end uh, distance answer to check in so this has to so if you want to improve this one you have to improve eh, also this one the distance between the 
entrance and the check-in desk okay so this one will even if you get the highest engineering characteristics for this one you will see which one has got the most uh, relation with another engineering characteristic then you can uh, focus in two engineering characteristics okay or one of them will improve the other okay so using the QFD will tell you which engineering characteristics you, you you have to target or you have to focus in order to improve your product in order to um, uh, compete the competitors and uh, make your product unique um, compared to the other so uh, at this stage we reach uh, to the end of our session uh, I wish you find it uh, uh, useful thank you very much and nice day